And now is the time for our product demo. So we will um, demonstrate a few functionalities of the Cistern Pure Neural Server solution. We'll start with the file translation functionality, and we'll start uh, by translating a few files that I have on my machine, a few samples here. Uh, they are all in English, and I want to translate them all into Spanish. So I've already selected the languages here. The source can be auto-detected. The target needs to be specified by the user. And when I click Upload, I can either browse to the files or drag and drop them. It could even be a zip archive containing all the files. And I'm going to select them all and drag and drop them here. So for the PDF document, uh, there are several uh, choices available. I know that it's editable, so one of the options is to use our latest precise PDF component. And the translation is now launched for all the documents. We refresh the view to see which file gets translated first. They're processing, so there's a filtering step uh, which takes care of converting the source format into a translatable, uh, and the first file is, is now translated, into a translated format, which is XLIF. So we um, can now see the result of the translation process on this PDF file, and we're open the translated brochure in Word. Images and PDFs are rendered in uh, DOCX format. So here is the translated file, uh, any images, layout, style, tables, uh, are preserved in the translation. We see that it's the result of the translation. The result gets um, the name of the file when it opens in Word, uh, bears a prefix with result underscore. So that's our translated file. Looks nice. And um, Another thing I wanted to show you here under this file translation functionality is uh, also the ability for the documents not only to download them, but also to edit them. Meaning if you have to uh, make the translation fully perfect to publish them or communicate them internally to someone expecting a certain level of quality, uh, instead of downloading the file and reworking it in Word or the third party, so the Microsoft application. You can edit it in the Cistern application. This will first allow you to retrieve uh, any, um, any fuzzy matches from a translation memory. So if there were closed sentences already translated by someone within the organization, you will benefit from these uh, existing translations which are close to the content you're translating, but not exactly the same. As an example here on the third uh, sentence uh, we have here, we see that there is a fuzzy match available. A fuzzy match is a partial correspondence from the translation memory. Uh, and this is visible here at the bottom in the fuzzy match tab. And I will here see by clicking on the eye icon, what is the difference between what is already in the translation memory and what I'm translating. So basically it's just a casing uh, change, so I'm perfectly happy with the already existing validated translation and I can apply it in my translation. Um, now other statuses are available here. We see that the second segment in the translation is what we call a TM match, so it's already a sentence which was translated by someone within the organization and validated. So I don't need to spend time uh, reviewing this. I need to focus on the machine translated segments. I can filter on these machine translated um, sentences and I can uh, focus on these. Once I uh, have made changes to a segment a sentence, such as here uh, on this first um, segment in my file. Once I'm happy with the edits I've made, I can validate the segment and this will change the status of the segment here. And these segments can now be added to 
a translation memory. So I can add these to the translation memory available for other users than to reuse the edits I've made. So it's very important and uh, um, interesting to use this tool when we want to capitalize on changes made uh, by authorized users on the translation memory so that they can be reused within the company. Okay, so for the file translation, that's basically the main feature. Let's switch to the text uh, translation functionality and uh, let's take a small extract from this web page. Uh, it's an extract from some collaboration between Capgemini and the uh, European Space Agency. So I'll select the text here, which is in French. I can switch the languages from French to English, and I'm going to choose a purely generic uh, engine to translate, or we call it translation profile. Let's translate with this generic translation profile and see the output. Uh, it's okay, uh, but as a specialist, I know that um, there are certain terms which need to be translated differently. Um, namely, la biomass aérienne uh, was translated by aerial biomass, but I know that it should be translated differently, and I have already entered a user dictionary entry. That's how a user dictionary looks like in Citroën. So different columns, very simple to use, source column, target column, and here the grammatical category of the term. So I know that I want to translate uh, biomass aérienne uh, with above ground biomass. That's the correct translation. Here, the system already knows how to inflect this term, both in the source and in the target, so in, in English. It should be plural just by adding an S at the last word in the term. So this was my generic translation. And if I now apply the dictionary we've just seen, we'll see that it changes the output. And the terms that come from the dictionary, from the user dictionary, are now in blue. And if I were to make this term plural, which requires more edits, in French than in English, uh, it, it adjusts. It was made plural here by the system. So that's basically how user dictionary works and interacts with the uh, translation. You just need to create a user dictionary or add new terms in an existing one and apply a translation profile which applies the dictionary. Now, another uh, feature I wanted, or interesting information I wanted to show you in the file, in the text translation functionality, is our new uh, formal versus informal mode. We have trained our engines to produce either a formal or an informal output. As an example, if we translate from English into French using, an, let's start with the formal mode of address, so we need to use a, a pro profile, a translation profile with the formal um, option. If I'm translating a sentence which can be translated into a formal way in French, which is comment allez-vous, it's the polite uh, way. Uh, if I switch to the informal mode, it adjusts and says comment vas-tu, which is the usual way of addressing a colleague or someone you know in French. So the formal informal is something new we've introduced and uh, many of our customers uh, were very happy to see this implemented to translate certain types of contents uh, directed at certain um, audiences. We have also a very uh, interesting new feature for, it's more for linguists. Um, it's the ability to uh, indicate the gender of a term in the user dictionary, which is quite unique. And there are other advanced coding clues we can indicate in the user dictionary to uh, make the dictionary a little bit more rich. Um, as an example, from English into French, um, we have, um, you know, it's uh, very much
very much linked to the um, yeah the times we are living in. Um, so the COVID, it's a disease. So um, first in French we use le COVID, which is a masculine term. But that, as it's a disease, uh, the French Academy said, or uh, there was a, a recommendation to use the feminine for COVID. But obviously everyone was saying le COVID, so masculine um, at the beginning, and we have trained our engines or any corpora which contain the masculine form. If we need to change this, it can be tricky with many systems, but with the Cistran system, um, you just need in the user dictionary um, to add a clue, an advanced coding clue, here it can be feminine, but it can be singular, plural. There are other uh, advanced coding clues we can integrate. So I just need to tell the system that it should be feminine. And if I now switch to my um, profile, you see that it changed le into la, which is now correct, uh, grammatically speaking in French, la COVID. This can be tricky to adjust with other systems. And the ability to take some um, advanced coding clues really is linked to the long history of Cistran, uh, also in, in rule-based in initial times where we have compiled a lot of uh, linguistic information in the system. Okay, so the text translation functionality and file translation functionalities are the widely used um, functionalities by our customers. But we already, we also have, sorry, I said, um, uh, some plugins, some extensions. So I'm first going to show you the browser extension on this same um, French page. Or no, yeah, let's take this, um, or let's take a, a Chinese content instead. Maybe it's uh, uh, something that many uh, users encounter in their work when they are doing research. They are on a foreign um, article and they really don't know what it's talking about. So if you need to um, have a gist of the contents of this page, you can use the Cistran extension and um, select the languages you want to translate, the translation profile and translate the page. And we'll soon discover what this article is about. It's starting to be translated. You see the status here, so the first lines, and we see that the article here is already uh, translated and it will translate the links on the right. It's now done. Um, so we know now that it's um, something very specific about the black holes in the universe and some literary uh, inspiration. So the extension is one way to translate web pages. Uh, other um, plugins or uh, translation functionalities which are available directly from the translation, from the um, applications you're working into, um, the client applications in Word as an example. So I have a document here. Uh, here there are several functionalities. I can either use the, oops, Use the Cistern Interactive Translator by clicking Control Shift T, and this launches automatically the translation. Indeed, there is a shortcut defined here in my uh, Cistern options, and the Control Shift T is the, the option we've defined or the shortcut we've defined to translate any text selection. It can be Word, but it can be in any uh, application, which is very handy. Even web pages or intranet pages can be translated this way. Another way to use the plugins is to translate the whole document or just a selection. And we'll see that on this uh, PowerPoint file here. So let's translate from French, from English into French, the whole PowerPoint document with its layout. It's getting translated, it's finished already. So we now see the translated slides in French. And the ability to, trans to, to retrieve the layout is an interesting feature. Uh, last, um, during the slides, uh, I said that there was also the possibility to translate uh, large batches of files um, in the Windows Explorer by right-clicking on a folder. So here the files to translate are all in English. I want to translate them all into French. 
So right clicking on Cistern Translate, we launch the Quick File Translator. I can select the profile I want to use. If I want to use a specific translation profile, I can include subfolders. I can filter on uh, file formats if I want to translate only the documents in docx format in the in the um, hierarchy as an example, or I can just leave the defaults like this and launch the translation. And we'll see the status for each file. We see it's translated now for two files and there's only one remaining. Okay, and it took, it took us about uh, a little bit more than four seconds to translate the whole batch. And what the system did is to create a copy of the um, folder and the translated files are now in there. So we can now see the uh, translated files. So um, these are the main translation functionalities of the Citroen product. There are other uh, translation functionalities available, of course, via API to integrate with any uh, CAD tool or um, uh, third applications for which we do have a set of already existing connectors. Um, yeah, oh, if you are interested in seeing what the solution can provide for your use case, uh, we can, of course, um, provide you a customized demo um, based on the description of the use case and your needs, challenges you're facing regarding the translation.